In this video I'm going to give you a little studio tour and show you everything I own and use as a photographer and filmmaker because obviously gear doesn't really matter. Or maybe it does. <laughs> as a photographer and filmmaker because Scheiße. While I'm filming this, a new Amazon package just arrived. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back, Samuel here. Uh, I just want to give you a little update where we are moving to a new place and I ran into this problem of not having enough storage options. Like I don't have any bags except my uh, camera backpack. So I bought some new um, cases and bags and I want to talk a little bit about them. Uh, first of all, I bought these with my own money. It's not sponsored. I just needed bags and I looked online what other people are recommending. Let's start with this one. This is the uh, Pelican Air 1535. It's uh, a lighter version of their famous uh, Pelican 1510. And, the, and these are known for being super rugged, like you can smash them somewhere or a car can, you know, drive over it. You can survive a tsunami basically. And this is a, a trolley, so you can also do this. And then it has wheels. And I already put my first uh, sticker on it. Of course, Rico represent. Let's open this sucker. Uh, you can get this with like regular foam and then you can make your own uh, compartments. But I bought this uh, with the camera inlay and this is how it looks. Very bright yellow and I already set it up the way I would use it. But you can customize this whole thing uh, so that your cameras and lenses fit. But I still need more space and then I got this one here. This is from Vanguard and this is how it looks inside. It has a lot of space and again you can customize this. You have space for uh, cables again. You might even be able to put a laptop in here. And what I like about this one is that um, it's not so soft. Like, see, I can really... Ow! Okay, maybe it's too much force. But once you put equipment in here, um, it also has this handle. It is actually very, very stiff. So your equipment is definitely well protected. And I have another bag that is even cheaper than this. And that is this one here. Um, this is similar to this one, but just a little cheaper quality. I have my film camera here. And I think this will be my... Um, like analog stuff, you know, lenses I don't use that much, my film gear, point and shoot. This is what I use um, for my tripods, light stands. This is my main uh, light stand I use. So once I move to the new place, uh, we're going to do a little desktop home office tour and then I show you how I packed uh, my camera cases. So, see you in a bit. <music> Here we are, welcome to the Samuel Street Life headquarters. <laughs> this is what uh, 70,000 subscribers on YouTube gets you. It's a pretty normal office, it's nothing special. I'm not a Peter McKinnon. And I, I couldn't be happier. Okay, let's do a little tour. So this is my main light here. This is the Godox SL60W. And I usually use a softbox for that, but this room is too small to keep the softbox on the light. So it's, it's in my living room. And whenever I need it, I grab it. And then let's go to my main uh, desk. This is my printer. It's not a photo printer, it's just for documents. And this is where I usually put my X-H1 to stream, but I'm using it right now to film. And yeah, I have very cheap uh, speakers. Um, these are from Hercules. I, I think I got them when I was 18 or 19. It's a long time ago, but they still work. So my main computer is a laptop. This one here is the Dell XPS 15. And it's connected to my monitor. This is a BenQ 
I forgot the name, but I will put it in this video. And then here's something I just recently got, and this was sent to me from BenQ, and this is this lamp here. This is called the screen bar. And it's basically just an LED lamp that you can turn on and you can change the color temperature and the brightness. full disclosure here I'm not getting paid to show you this product but I get asked to review so many products and I often say no to them because I don't really need them but this light is actually solving a big problem I had because because the overhead lamps in this room are very warm and when you edit photos and video and you have warm lights around you it really affects the way you work on colors for example if you want to do a white balance correction uh, it's always good to have daylight because our eyes adjust to color so quickly and at the same time it's also not hard on your eyes when you have light around your monitor and when i just want to relax and watch youtube videos or browse i set the color temperature to very warm and then it gives me a nice ambient relaxing atmosphere so so yeah besides just illuminating my desk it's actually a very useful tool uh, for my editing process so so thank you BenQ, for sending me this lamp <laughs> Okay, what else do I have on my desk? So these are my main hard drives. I usually use um, two of them in a RAID configuration. Um, these are mirrored, so whatever I save on one hard drive will be uh, mirrored to the other drive. And I just use this simple docking station. I basically just replace these hard drives once they are full. And then I keep two copies of each hard drive uh, in a separate room. And this is the hard drive I use for all my videos. This is a Samsung T5 SSD. I got the pink version because they didn't have uh, the black version or the gray version when I wanted to buy it. But it's a great SSD, very fast for editing. It's, it's my main editing hard drive. Okay, let's go to my audio section. So I have uh, the Zoom H5, which serves as an audio interface for my streams and recording voiceovers. It's connected here into my preamp. This one here is the DBX. Uh, I forgot the number, DBX286S. This is an analog uh, preamp. And then plugged in into the DBX is my main microphone, which is uh, this one here. I know it's not really photography related, but I'm going to talk a little bit about my plans. I don't think as street photographers we should only capture the reality. Reality sometimes is boring. This is the ElectroVoice RE320. And this is what you usually hear when I do my streams or my voiceovers or when I do editing sessions. And it's an amazing mic. It's a dynamic microphone, so it picks up everything that's in front of the mic and not much around me. And that is good because I don't, this room is not treated for audio. And as you can maybe hear, there's a lot of uh, reverb, which is not ideal for filming videos. And then my main uh, headphones for editing. This is the K272 HD from AKG and I bought them I think when I was 16 so yeah I've been using them for a long long time and for streaming I have this uh, Camlink uh, capture card this goes uh, straight into my XH1 which, which sits on my battery grip because that is uh, then powered but I also use um, the Blackmagic ATEM Mini this is a little switcher that enables you to connect up to uh, four cameras and you also have an HDMI out and you can also plug in some microphones and I usually use this to connect my laptop into the ATEM so that I can switch between my camera and the laptop for presentations for example because my main streaming computer is actually uh, my old iMac which is under this table because the screen is broken it just serves as a my desktop computer even though it's not sitting on my desktop anymore and then I can switch between my laptop and my iMac uh, using my external monitor so next to my desk i have this area here which is uh, my router and all these cables and this is where i charge my batteries and plug in my lights and yeah it's it's very messy but i didn't want to clean this up and pretend like i'm a tidy person and then here i have my uh, equipment like some bags uh, my tripods so this is my main tripod i've been using this uh, since i since I'm 22 or 3, I, 
think that's when I bought it. This tripod is from Slick called Sprint Pro uh, EZ. It's a very light tripod and I bought this because it's light and good for traveling. And then I switched the tripod head to this um, video head from uh, Manfrotto. And this is called the MVH500AH. Yeah, it's great because it's, it's good for panning and tilting. This is my main tripod. I don't have anything else. I should probably invest in a better, more sturdy tripod, but it still does the job. So, and that usually sits here. So this is uh, where I store my camera gear. The camera gear that I'm frequently using because most of my gear is packed in bags. And because we just moved into this apartment, uh, everything is a little messy and I don't really know what to do with this space. This is where I store lenses and stuff. I have some prints here. Maybe this is a good time to tell you that this whole office space is just a temporary solution because we are actually moving again because we got our own place now. Uh, we bought a house uh, last year. So I guess I have to do this again when we move again. But uh, this is just the current situation. And then I will do stuff like um, treating the room for audio and maybe painting the walls in a dark gray, something that's better for filming. Okay, let's have a look how I packed my uh, camera cases and bags. And then I will show you what camera gear I'm currently using, the lenses and all that stuff, okay? Scheiße. <laughs> Okay, so I just decided that I'm not going to show you every camera bag I own and how I packed it because there's just too much and I just realized that I don't have enough gear to pack my camera cubes. So I'm only going to show you how I packed my Pelican case because this is where my main photography and YouTube gear lives. Let's open this up. So here it is, almost fully packed. Um, I have some space left for small things. And I'm also using some of the equipment that I usually have here uh, to film myself. This is the XE4, by the way. And I have this new lens, the 15 to 45, which is super nice and it does focus super close. Um, so I'm going to use this as my new vlogging lens. So this is all the stuff that I use on a daily basis. Let's go through the compartments real quick. So here I have uh, my little air blower. Um, I have a void lander lens here. I have some lens caps here main photo camera at the moment, Leica M262. And if you're wondering, where's your GR3? Uh, it's always in my pocket or in my jacket pocket, just to clear that up. <laughs> and then here's my main video camera for YouTube videos, Fujifilm X-H1 and the Samyang 12mm T2.2 Cine lens. I love this combination. I will talk in more detail about the cameras uh, after this. And then we have uh, audio stuff, my Zoom H1, Zoom H5 and here's my main microphone for filming. This is the uh, Aperture Deity VMic D3 and it fits in perfectly. And here I have my GoPro Hero 8. This is the little potato cam and I'm not using this one a lot lately because I'm using the XE4 to, uh, to vlog. Um, but great camera for POV, um, behind the scenes stuff. I also have the media mod for the GoPro Hero 8 and then I can use uh, the little Rode Video Micro but the internal microphone is good enough. I also have a little filter set here. This is originally uh, made for the GR3 but I have this step down uh, ring attached to it and then I can use this uh, ND uh, graduation filter and put that in front of my uh, Leica lenses which all have 39mm filter threads. We have some lenses here. This is the Fujinon 23F2. I don't use this lens a lot lately, but it's my only weather sealed lens. So I'm keeping this just in case it rains. And then my favorite uh, video lens, besides my uh, Samyang 12 mm uh, is this one here. This is the Camlan 28 1.4. It's a fully manual lens. And it has a stepless aperture ring, so that's great for video. And this lens definitely has uh, its own character. It does render the autofocus background very nicely. And whenever I need a cinematic uh, field of view, which is 28, is roughly 40 millimeter in full frame terms. And that is basically the focal length of our eyes. So yeah, I bring this lens to every shoot and it's always a lifesaver to have this lens. And you might have noticed I have all these step-up rings on my lenses. Uh, which allows me to put on uh, an ND filter. So this is my main variable ND filter and it, it's nothing fancy as you can see. It's from Harma. I think it was like 20 euros maybe. 
But I also have this ND filter here from uh, Freewell. And I had to buy this for just one shoot uh, when I was shooting with the Sony a7S uh, Mark III. And it's not that strong. It, has, uh, it goes from two to five stops. But it feels good and the lens cap is kind of cool because it's uh, magnetic. And then in this small compartment here I have my little flash. This is the Flash Q20 Mark II from Lightpix Labs. Uh, I talked about this flash a lot on my channel. You can use this uh, wirelessly um, so you can do remote flash shooting. It's not that expensive and it takes uh, regular batteries. Uh, and then I have some audio stuff here, some accessories, windshields for my microphones. This is for my uh, Zoom H5, for my Zoom H1. Uh, and this is also where I store my uh, Rode Wireless Go uh, system, which I'm using right now. It's connected to this lavalier mic. And then I have a bunch of cables and batteries and lens caps in this organizer lid here. Yeah, this is it. This is how I store my gear. This usually sits on the ground and I just open it up whenever I need stuff. But I do stuff all the time, so my, my cameras are already set up and sitting somewhere. Obviously I have more gear that I didn't show uh, in this video. And I think I'm going to go over some of my cameras I'm using at the moment, because I know that you guys like this stuff. And I think I have a little problem because I feel like I have too many cameras, but I still believe that every camera I own serves a purpose and it's not just sitting on the shelf. Okay, let's start with lenses that I don't use a lot anymore, but I just keep them in case I need them. And the first one is the first lens I ever bought. Um, this is a Pentax 50mm uh, 1.7. Uh, it's a fully manual lens and I bought this one for my first DSLR, which was a Pentax K100. This is a lens that I keep for uh, nostalgic reasons. And I use this occasionally to get more reach when I shoot a B-roll in the city, for example. Let's stick with Pentax for a moment. I have another one here. Um, this is the Pentax K 135mm 2.5. And this one is a lens that um, I also used on my first DSLR, my K100. And it was super sharp on that camera. I think it's still very, very sharp and it has super smooth bokeh. Let's do some lens ASMR. And it is the longest lens I own, so I keep it just in case I need that reach. And then here's my favorite uh, Canon lens for the EF mount. This is the 35 f2 and it is also stabilized. And this was my documentary lens on my 5D Mark II that I used to use for like weddings and uh, event photography. And it is actually a very, very good lens for video. I use this a lot on my Canon C100 when I still was uh, shooting videos. Uh, corporate films and all of that stuff. I don't have any Canon camera at the moment, so I don't know why I still have this, but you know, Canon was, for me, Canon was always the professional camera to get the job done. And I know I can use my Fuji gear and maybe my Leica camera, but, but Canon is still so reliable. So whenever I need to rent a Canon camera, uh, I would like to have this lens just for that, just in case. And then we have a Russian lens here. This is the uh, Zenit Helios 44M6 58mm f2. This is kind of a legendary lens. It's not the one that has that super swirly bokeh that everyone loves to use. And when you shoot this wide open, the image is very flat. There's not much contrast and it does flare a lot, which is kind of nice if you want to go for that vintage uh, cinematic look. And what I also did is I put in this little self-made fake anamorphic filter just using regular uh, tape. And what this does is it changes the shape of the bokeh in the background, the bokeh balls. They become much more narrow and maybe we should put this on the camera just to see how it looks. Look at how cinematic my tired eyes look like. So yeah, I really like this lens and I used to use this um, for like short films. Okay, let's move on to the cameras I'm using. Now I already mentioned the Leica M262, but here it is again. Um, so this is my main street photography camera at the moment. And it's just my main photo camera at the moment. Um, I really enjoy the rangefinder experience. 
focusing manually. And I'm shooting a lot of 50mm lately. So this is the uh, Leica Summerit 50mm 2.5. And this is definitely becoming my favorite lens on this camera. It's so nice and smooth, so, so quick to focus. And it's so light and small. And, and the image quality is very, very good. It has a very modern look. And my second favorite lens uh, is the Voigtlander 35 f2 Ultron. This is a very cool lens because it is sharp like a modern lens, but the bokeh looks more like a vintage lens. So it has character, but it is still very sharp. And last year I actually bought the Leica 35 f2 Summicron and I had it for one day and I compared it to this lens. And to be honest, this lens was sharper. It was a little colder, but compared to the Summicron, this one was a little better, which is crazy. Now the colors on the Summicron were much nicer and maybe the lenses of my copy uh, weren't aligned properly, but I'm not sure. I, I bought it from the Leica store directly and they usually do checks. So I was very surprised. So when I saw how close they are and actually I preferred the images coming from this lens, uh, I returned the Summicron. And I really love this uh, vintage looking lens hood. It just looks so cool. I'm not a super fan of this focusing knob. It's not a tab. But Voigtlander actually made an updated version of this lens that has a real focusing tab, which just came out, I think in March. I'm thinking of exchanging this one for the new one because I, since, since using uh, the Summerit, I can focus much faster than using this knob. So yeah, I'm very excited about that new one. It doesn't look as sexy as this one, but yeah, I might, I might, I might get it. And then I have one more Leica lens. This is the 28 mm 2.8. I think it's the latest version. Super, super sharp. Uh, I did a little comparison video between the GR3 and this lens. Overall, this lens was much sharper and had more contrast. But to be honest, I don't use this one a lot because I'm very happy with the GR3 and I don't really enjoy photographing on a 28 on the M262. But I have this lens because I'm using it on my Minolta CLE, which I think is the perfect match. And I sold all my Minolta lenses because I wasn't too happy with my 28. Um, it wasn't the sharpest. On digital, this lens is amazing, but on film, it gives you like a super clean look and I just love how it looks on film. And also without the lens, so this lens is super small, which is nice. It's much smaller than the Minolta 28 I had. And this was one of the reasons why I wanted this lens for this camera, because it makes it so small and compact. Let's talk a little bit more about the Minolta CLE, because there's one guy that is always commenting under my videos. What about the CLE? I hope you didn't sell your CLE. No, I didn't sell my CLE. I still have it, but I don't shoot film that much. Uh, I use this camera to photograph uh, my family, my wife. This is my family documentation camera. So it is in use, but you don't see it that much on my channel because I shoot mostly digital, it's just faster um, for my YouTube videos. But yeah, Minolta CLE is still my favorite film camera and I hope it will never break. But once it does, I'm not sure if I would buy another one, to be honest. But I will enjoy it while I have it. <laughs> Here's another film camera that I acquired last year. This is the Yashica T4 and it is the Safari edition, or I don't know if that's the official name, but it is green. Yeah, it's just a very great point and shoot. Um, the lens is super sharp. But I don't really shoot film a lot lately. So this is again just a family reportage camera. And I'm definitely going to use this more uh, once my son is born and then uh, we can start making uh, family albums again. Did we talk about the GR3 yet? <laughs> of course, I'm still using the GR3 on a daily basis. This is my most used camera. It's always in my pocket or in my jacket pocket. And everywhere I go, this camera comes with me and it still takes amazing photos. And yeah, I don't think I need to talk more about this camera. I have so much content about this camera on my channel. I still believe it's the best pocketable uh, street camera right now. It's a little slower than the competition, but in terms of image quality, and the colors, uh, it's, it's really hard to beat the GR3. And I know that a lot of you guys who are watching this right now are Fuji users and don't take it the wrong way, but I really prefer uh, the raw files coming out of this camera than the X-E4 or my X-H1. I'm not really a fan of the X-Trans sensor from Fujifilm. Oh man, this is going to trigger a lot of people. <laughs> to me, the image quality when you like zoom in and you know the details and how it renders um, sharp areas, it always looks 
a little bit like a smartphone photo. It's hard to describe. It's just not smooth. I don't know. When I compare it to my Leica RAW files or this one, it's, it's just clean and sharp. It's not like weird X-Trans sensor-like. But we are talking about something that is so small you can't really tell unless you zoom in and uh, yeah. Not hating on your Fuji. I love the X-C4. I love my X-H1. Just saying. So the last camera I'm going to show you is the Ricoh GR. This is the first APS-C GR that ever came out and this was actually the first GR I ever owned. Not this one because my old one is not working anymore but I bought this in 2020 or 2019, I don't remember because the GR and the GR2 they have a specific look to them that the GR3 doesn't have. Uh, I'm mainly talking about the positive film uh, filter which is so nice on this camera and also because it has a flash and I really hope that Ricoh will give us back the flash in the GR4 if that ever comes out. This camera here is definitely my personal favorite of all of the cameras I have or own just because of the look and it reminds me of a time when I was exploring street photography and traveling and this camera, not this one but my old GR, has seen a lot of crazy things that I can't really talk about anymore ever. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I just love it. Oh man, I just realized that I deleted the last take I did, so my whole outro is gone. But I think I was saying something like gear is not that important and all that crap, but, but it is obviously also important. I don't want to start a conversation if it's important or not. Um, that's, I think, a stupid conversation to have. And my personal philosophy when it comes to photography gear or filmmaking gear is when I don't use it for more than a year, I just get rid of it. And I often get rid of it much sooner. Um, at the end, cameras and lenses and all of that stuff, they're just tools for me because... Okay, I think it's time to wrap it up because I feel like I'm starting to justify myself here. And I have no shame admitting that I'm a little gearhead. I love nice gear. I think everyone does. But at the end, it's... Uh... No, what am I doing here? I'm starting to justify myself again. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this little behind the scenes video and my little studio tour. And I think the next time I'm going to do a video like this will be in another year or so. Because... Because I feel like lately I'm doing too many gear videos and I want to go out again and do more experience videos. Yeah, all right. So I got to finish this video because I am literally editing this video right now. Uh, so hopefully I can finish it today so I can push it out on this Saturday. Thank you so much for watching and I see you in the next video very soon. And maybe you noticed I'm not in my apartment anymore, which means there will be a little surprise coming soon. All right, bye. <laughs>